When you dive into grow lighting, you fall into a very, very deep and seemingly endless rabbit hole of acronyms, physics, graphs, charts, numbers and claims. Far more detail than I've ever needed and frankly wanted. I just want the thing, if you know what I mean. How can I choose the best grow lights I can find that's within my budget? So today I'm providing a very simplified version of grow lighting for plants and how you can choose without having to delve too deeply into it. And if you watch till the end, I'll give you a genuine hack that can save you hours of research and grow light comparisons. And believe me, this hack alone will be worth the wait. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with saying what actually happens when your plants don't get enough light. You have lacklustre growth, possibly elongated and leggy plants, fewer or no blooms, and blooms that are over very quickly. Your plants are more susceptible to pathogens and pests, and the plants might be more susceptible to rot. No grower wants any of that. So what I've done here is I've divided this into three sections. First, I'm going to give you my six key considerations before you purchase a grow light. Second, I'm going to tell you exactly what I have in the greenhouse and third I'll give you the key takeaways from all this and tell you how to hack the system without having to learn any of the science. Okay, so let's start with these six key considerations. I've ordered these into what I consider to be the order that you need to look them up if you were actually shopping for lights. So first up, plants use every wavelength in photosynthesis. Some more than others, depending on their stage of growth, but for our purpose, simply look for full spectrum grow lights. Couple of questions. Can you use cheap white LED lights, fluorescent lights, strip lights, or so-called blurple lights, or anything that isn't specifically marketed as a grow light? The answer is yes, it's better than nothing, but of course it's not optimal. The key takeaway from number one is look for full spectrum lights, but take care not to be duped because cheaper can mean they're lying. Check for reviews. So number two of the key considerations, LED grow lights are more cost effective and efficient than other types. That's the key takeaway from that particular point. Most plants hobbyists will be better to look for LED grow lights. So number three of the key considerations, wattage. This is simply the amount of power that it uses. It doesn't reflect the efficiency or the light output of a grow light. So you look for lower numbers in the wattage, but do take into account how big you want the light to be in terms of coverage. And the key takeaway from that point is you can generally ignore the wattage figure unless you're down to comparing two like for like grow lights in which case a lower wattage will mean it'll cost less to run and probably be cheaper in the initial outlay but obviously that doesn't mean it'll last for longer than the other nor that it will be more efficient so key consideration number four these are the light metrics now i did consider including brief explanations of all the many metrics associated with choosing grow lights and to be honest a basic understanding of them does help when choosing but it's the metrics that what confuses people in the first place so I decided to put all the details in the description of the metrics so you can look at them if you want but here I'm just going to show you the acronyms with a brief definition of each up on the screen now the key is to remember that when making grow light comparisons you can simply look for the bigger numbers of each so all of these metrics that you can see on screen you're looking for the bigger number compare it to another light whichever is the bigger number usually the better one simple as that really remember what i'm trying to do here we're not getting into the science we are trying to make it as simple as possible so the takeaway here is look for the bigger numbers you can in these metrics although higher will likely mean more overall expense so you may need to compromise between your budget and the grow light quality now when i've actually looked at the cheaper lights on amazon the vast majority are actually claiming good numbers in each of these metrics so it boils down to how much you can afford in the first place how efficient you want it to be and how big an area you want it to light up okay key consideration number five positioning of the light matters so if you test with a lux meter it's really easy to see how the amount of light a plant receives at canopy level from a grow light generally diminishes the further away it gets it's pretty intuitive really so to get the most benefit the lights need to be positioned as close as is reasonably practical there are some limits to this which is usually stated in the manuals but if there is any heat coming from the light then of course it's best not to get too close and yes some plants can get something called chlorosis from too much light if they are too close so read the manual 
The takeaway from this is that most plant hobbyists would do well to position their lights within a couple of meters from the plant, but not probably as close as 30 centimeters as a rule of thumb. I choose to position mine quite high, but we'll go into that in a little while. So key consideration number six, light bleed also plays a part. So anyone who's ever tried to light up a conservatory that has no blinds or curtains will know how difficult it is as most of the light just bleeds through the windows. As soon as you put blinds in place, the light bounces off them and lights your conservatory. So to be optimal for your plants, you need an enclosed and or a reflective space. Just something to be aware of, especially in a greenhouse. The key takeaway from that is that the positioning of your lights, especially near windows, can diminish their effectiveness through something called light bleed. Okay, so we're in the greenhouse and I'm going to tell you and talk you through what I have going on with my grow light. It's certainly not an optimal setup. Uh, this is simply what I could afford at the time and it's better than not having any lighting at all. So let's talk through them. Now I've left the lights on simply because I wanted you to see them in working order, which that all will become clear in a second. So the sun is out today, so unfortunately it's a little bit bright up there, just past my sulfur hot box there. So this one is the Mars Hydro TS1000. So this is at the budget end for that size of light. So it's quite a large light, I'd say it's probably about 50 centimetres in length, 40 centimetres in width, and you can get a feel of how far away it is from my plants. I would say probably no more than about two metres at uh, the maximum from most of these plants on this side. Now, why have I got it there? Well, that's not optimal. Of course, it would be better if I could have it down here a little bit closer to the canopy, but of course, I'm not after maximum yield, you know, I'm not growing plants for eating, I'm growing plants simply for the aesthetic of it. So if I was to have lots of grow lights hovering above uh, the canopy of what we've got going on here, then I feel it would take away from what I can see and the aesthetic. And things are going are growing pretty well as they are anyway, once we get round to the right seasons, of course. So up here we have the Mars Hydro TS1000, but a little bit further along, we have a no brand cheap grow light, much smaller, um, does actually produce some heat. The Mars Hydro one doesn't, uh, but it doesn't matter because in my case, I want the heat at this time of year anyway. Um, that one is a little bit closer. Like I said earlier in the video, any extra light is better than nothing. Whatever you can actually uh, add to light up your plants will help. Not optimal, but will help. If you want the best of everything, then you're going to have to pay more for a more expensive branded grow light. Down here, I also have a very cheap LED strip light down here. Now, the reason it's down there is not to do with function. It's simply, I forgot that it was there. And I've just left it because I think it looks quite nice up lighting. So we can ignore that one. I also have the foil insulation around most of the walls of the, of the greenhouse, not beyond there because I want to let some sunlight in. You can see the sun is making a rare appearance today and it's so bright it actually completely uh, hides or dims the grow light that we've got on here, which gives you an idea of how much light plants actually need. It's flashing, not because these flash in front of my eyes, they just flash as a result of the video. So don't worry about that. So yes, we've got the foil. So that gives a little bit of reflection, stops the light bleed from happening. Of course, the light bleed will still happen further up. So as we move along into the other side of the greenhouse, we have a Mars Hydro TX1 uh, or TS600, TS600 I think that one is. And you can see, we've lost some of the LEDs. Quite a large number of the LEDs have just blown, gone, uh, and not lit up for whatever reason. Now, this is four years old. Now, you would expect, and the advice is generally, the branded, more expensive grow lights last longer. They're also more efficient, whereas these cheaper, no branded lights aren't as good. Now, these aren't actually as old as the Mars Hydro ones. This one is probably only about two to three years old, but that one is still going. And that is all the lighting I have in here. So again, 
it's a compromise between what I could afford at the time and the best that I could get. When I could afford the slightly more expensive but still budget Mars Hydro light, I bought them. When I could only afford the no branded uh, LED lights here, then I bought them. And when I couldn't afford either of those and I couldn't even afford a grow light, I bought a cheap LED fluorescent or strip light which is underneath down there that you just saw and that's the way it goes so in this video you should be able to see that even the cheapest light is better than nothing at all but if you want better then you need to go down the branded route and if you want to be able to compare them well that's coming up in the next section Okay, so section C, which is the key takeaway from all this, and of course, how to hack the system, which I did promise you. You can spend endless hours trying to understand all this tech, then even more hours comparing the lights, or you can simply go for the best quality grow lights you can afford from a specialist known brand. I've included some brand names in the pinned comment for reference, just to suit different budgets. Now, a well-known branded light should last longer, although they haven't in my case they should also be cheaper to run be more efficient and provide more usable wavelengths than the no brand lights but there is a caveat alternatively you can just do the best that you can to increase the light using the easiest and cheapest method at least it'll be better than what you had before in my case i've done both so how can we hack the system well first set your budget and select multiple grow lights from your preferred retailer such as amazon next utilize chat gpt so this is an ai it's available online anybody can sign up for it and it is free at the moment so you want to ask it to compare two of your chosen lights you simply input the sales descriptions into chat gpt and it will generate a detailed comparison of their efficiency their output and the features and quality. Now, while ChatGPT may not always be perfect, it can significantly assist in making informed decisions and navigating through the confusing numbers and statistics provided by the manufacturers. So, did that help? No doubt there'll be some folks who want more details, in which case, go for it. There's plenty out there. But for me, in my situation, I just wanted the best lights I could afford on my budget. And this simple guide is all I need to know, for now at least, as the physics of lighting currently lies outside my particular field of interest. I just want them lit up. So tell me in the comments if that helped or has it just confused you even more. And feel free to share with the community your experiences with grow lights, good or bad, and how it affects your plants. But the thing is, unless you've got some idea of how much light your plants actually need, all this will be useless. You might want to watch this video first as I go through the amount of light that some popular house plants need and then I measure and show you how much light they were actually getting in my greenhouse at the time. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.